Hi, my name is Alan Baker. This video is a follow-on from my one on an introduction to Zigbee Networks. Today I'll be talking about transmitting humidity and temperature data from a sensor. Part 1 deals with the setting up of the humidity and temperature sensors. Part 2 deals with the transmission of this data in a Zigbee network. So, if you are familiar with the DHT11 and the DHT22 data sensors, you can skip Part 1 and proceed to Part 2. To get an XB to transmit data, we need to set up an integrated development environment. To do this, we must acquire the Arduino development board or an equivalent development board, both of which must use the Arduino graphics user interface. Once the development board has been set up, we must then check with the control panel to see that the device software is functioning correctly. I'll then describe two of the humidity and temperature sensors that are available on the market. They are the DHT11 and the DHT22. I'll then link up both of these sensors one at a time with a development board and the laptop and through a program known as a sketch I'll show them both working on the laptop. Finally I'll set up the XBs at AT mode of operation and then show you how you can transmit humidity and temperature data from the development board. These are the two programmable development boards that are currently available. They come with digital ports, analog ports, power connections and resets. Each board is provided with connection cable with a USB-A connection to a laptop or standard computer. The integrated development environment software can be acquired from the following location. Once the zip file has been downloaded, place it in your desired location and then extract all the files. To start the app, follow my example. Note that my development board is connected to communication port number 7. If you are experiencing any difficulties, you can check the port for devices in the control panel. 
To locate the device manager, go into the control panel, select system and security, and then hardware and sound. From there, select Device Manager. You can see from the Device Manager listing that at the bottom, Communication Port 7 is now reserved for the Arduino Uno. If your device does not appear in the ports entry or the other devices entry, then consult the troubleshooting guide provided by Arduino. OK, now I'm ready to describe the program which Arduino calls the Sketch. For ease of viewing, I've divided it up into four parts. This is part one of the Sketch. From the first line, you can see it says include dht.h. So we need to include a library for the sensors. This is how you download the library. This grey area indicates that I've already downloaded the library. If it appears white, you can directly go ahead and download it. The next line defines the pin that I'm going to output data from on the sensor device. Then I define the sensor type, DHT11. The DHT22 type is commented out. The next line then links the pin and the sensor as part of a function. Then we set up the bitrate for the development board. This part of the sketch is straightforward. I've set up a delay for two seconds. This is followed by a dashed line and then a blank line. This is to provide spaces between the readings. The humidity and Celsius temperature lines are then written. The functions are defined in the library which I loaded earlier. I have a float H and a float C. This is because I expect decimal values and not just whole numbers. Finally, I've added a formula to provide a Fahrenheit reading. This next part of the sketch is also straightforward. I've added a function which determines that if any of the input values for humidity or temperature are invalid, then 
an error message is printed and those values are skipped and the sketch then returns for the next input values. As you can see, the last part of the sketch deals with printing of data. I start with humidity, then I wait a second, I then print the Celsius values, I then wait another second, and then I print the Fahrenheit values. I've added an extra line of space at the bottom. This is because I want the values to be printed in blocks and not running into each other. This slide shows a comparison between the DHT11 and DHT22 humidity and temperature sensors. These sensors are comparatively cheap. For example, the DHT11 can be purchased in the region of 4 for $8 or £8, while the DHT22 can be purchased in the region of 2 for $8 or £8. The DHT22, being twice the cost of the DHT11, has a much wider range of humidity and temperature. These values can vary between manufacturers, so check with the data sheet first. This slide shows the pin setup for the DHT11. The DHT22 would have exactly the same pin setup. The XB is located on the breadboard, but not in use at this time. Now I've got the breadboard with a sensor device connected to the development board and attached to the laptop. But before I download the sketch into the development board, I advise you to get a further app. Coterm is a serial port communication tool which is enjoyed by both professionals and hobbyists. It's also going to make a great display of printed data from the sensor. You can get Coterm from many websites. I went to the following approved website. OK, I can now test the DHT11 sensor. I'll connect it to the 5V connector and the ground connector on the development board. I'll not link up the sensor data connector pin for the moment because that sometimes interferes when loading the sketch into the development board. 
Now I'll open up the sketch in the Arduino IDE, compile it, and then download it into the development board. As the sketch for the DHT11 has been downloaded into the development board, I can now link up pin 2 of the sensor to the digital port 2 on the development board. Now I'll start the cool term up and see if I can get a result. All's fine so far. Now I'll repeat the process for the DHT22. The sketch will require a small edit to two lines. As the sketch for the DHT22 has been downloaded into the development board, I can now link up pin 2 of the sensor to the digital port 2 on the development board. I'll start the cool term up for the second time and see if I can get a result.
That's it for part one.